guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Today, we are talking about a bunch of new Wet n Wild stuff. I am so excited. I love drugstore makeup. I just did a huge roundup of the new Maybelline products that just hit the stores, and so I will link that video for you guys if you're interested in checking that out. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about the new Wet n Wild stuff. So I don't have the like new workout line that just launched and I think they just launched a few other things like a jelly highlighter-ish type of thing and like jelly eyeshadows and stuff. I don't have any of that but I have some other new products. When I do these videos I really just buy things that I'm actually genuinely interested in trying. I don't just buy things for the sake of buying them just to review when I know I'm already not interested in that type of formula or that type of texture of a product or things like that. Um, just because one, I don't really have the money just to like blow on things like that. And also it just kind of seems disingenuous to me and I already have a preconceived notion of a product. So I really just like to go in and get the products that I'm super excited about and see how they work. I definitely have some hits and I have some misses. We're going to go ahead and start off with primers. I'm just going to do it like in the order of how you apply things to your face. And I have two to talk about. So I did try the Photo Focused Matte Primer Stick. So they came out with this one as well as a hydrating one. I typically have more um, oily skin and so I did want to try out the matte one. So it comes in like a little pink tube and the stick itself is actually kind of a pink color. And so you just kind of swipe it on all over your face. And I think it actually does a pretty good job. It's not super sticky mattifying. Um, it actually does kind of have a little bit of like a slippery feel to it. So it does blur the pores really well. Um, and I feel like it does keep me a little bit more matte, but nothing like flat matte or sticky matte. It's just overall a good primer stick. It's nothing that's like blowing my socks off, but I do think it's good. And then the other primer is one of their new water drop primers. So they released three primers like this and also three setting sprays. So they released a cucumber, coconut, and rose scented primer and then setting sprays. But they all kind of do the same thing. Um, and so it says that it is a revolutionary cream to water formula, hydrates and locks down moisture, and it blurs the appearance of pores. The reason I chose the coconut or the cucumber one, excuse me, of this is because I chose the rose spray and so I wanted to see the different scents. I didn't really choose the coconut because that's not my hue, like I'm not really into that scent. So I just tried the cucumber and the rose. Now the cucumber primer, I do think it's a cool texture. I don't think it goes like completely liquidy to water. I mean like no. But I think it does kind of go to like a cream like gel type of finish. So it is cool. It's a different type of texture. Something that was really interesting to me though is that it is green. Um, I don't know. Here, let me show you guys. So you see that? It's like super green. And also, can you see the hole on the opening? It's like really big. Like normally like they're not that big of a hole. And I was like, oh, okay. And so it's just interesting. So... Oops, it does come out green like I was saying and you rub it in and like the color like dissipates. It's not even like anything that really shows up on the skin, but you can't really see it on camera, but it does look like it almost has like little water droplets on your hand. It definitely goes to like a light gel like finish, which I do think is interesting. It feels more hydrating on my skin than I would have assumed it would have. The whole blurring thing. I don't really think so. For my personal skin type, I just think it's too thin to actually do that. But it feels really cooling and really nice and hydrating on the skin. And this time of year, especially when things are drying out a little bit, that can be nice. I will say the scent on the primer is very, very strong. I'm not sure how it is with the setting spray, but it's like a sweet cucumber scent. It feel, It smells really artificial. And so and it's strong, like it will knock your socks off. So I'm not a huge, huge fan of that. I wish the scent was just a little bit lighter. It just feels like a really thick, sweet cucumber scent. So I'm not a huge fan, and I do notice it lingering a little bit on the skin, the scent, uh, probably for a good like hour, hour and a half after I have it on, and then the scent goes away. So just forewarning that that is what this product does. But overall, I do think it's a good hydrating primer. I don't think it does everything it claims to, but it definitely does kind of help give your skin a nice, like, plumper look. More plump? Plumper? More plump. I think is how you say it. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about foundation. So they did release a stick foundation. I feel like 
drugstore brands now are just coming out with all these stick foundations. Like they did a first round with like Makeup Revolution, L'Oreal, Maybelline, and now like Wet n Wild is, Milani is. I'm like, who's next? CoverGirl? We're gonna see one from you. I mean, they're just all the rave right now apparently. So I did get the uh, shade Soft Ivory, which is typically what I wear in Wet n Wild colors. And you do get how much product in here? 0.42 ounces. So it's not a full ounce of foundation, which is pretty typical. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. You're getting a little less. So it is just, you know, your typical stick foundation. It's really similar to the look of the matte stick. Um, but in this one, you're only getting 0.35 ounces. So that's something to definitely note. I don't like this at all and I really wish I did I really want to like stick foundations and I like the L'Oreal one the infallible shaping stick I'll link that for you guys down below if you're interested in checking that product out because I really do like that um this one reminds me a lot of the Maybelline Super Stay stick and I wasn't a huge fan of that one either this just kind of feels like really kind of greasy going on it's very thick it feels really thick when you're trying to blend it out and it's very patchy oh my goodness this is probably like the patchiest stick foundation I have ever tried it just like does not blend out like it no matter what you do it looks patchy on the skin and even over that hydrating primer you know and on my hand like I don't have really deep set wrinkles in my hands or anything and it's still just looking real patchy so I just don't love this. I'm not sure who would. The coverage is also like light to medium at best. I would say for sure it's just light. You could build it up to like slightly medium, but it's not going to go any more than that. And it just feels really thick on the skin and it just blends out so patchy. So I think out of everything I have tried, this is the biggest disappointment because it just looks awful on the skin. Okay, so moving on to powder. They released a new Photo Focus Loose Powders. So they came out with three different ones. They came out with a translucent, a banana, and a deep. I did pick up the banana shade because sometimes with translucent, it can make you look a little ghostly underneath the eyes, and I'm just not a huge fan of that. So I wanted to try the banana. Unfortunately, the banana is way too dark for my skin tone. I think if you are fair to light skin tone like me you should just definitely go with the translucent if you are light medium you definitely get the banana and then obviously if you are medium to deep I would go with the deep one so it's a really like large package how much do you get in here you get 0.7 ounces so I feel like that's a lot I mean you get a poop ton but it's very messy I accidentally dumped a little bit too much off this morning or out this morning and so I don't love this for under the eyes because it's just too dark for that. However, I will use this to set the entire face. Um, and so I really kind of like to use it that way. I think it sits on the skin really nice. It doesn't look overly powdery and overly cakey and all of that. But it just adds a really nice finishing veil to the skin. So I don't hate the texture or the consistency of the powder at all. I like how much product you get. I think just the banana shade, if you're going to use it to set under the eyes and you're fair to light, it's just going to be too dark for you. So other than that, though, I really do like to like set my whole face with it. So I think it's just a shade thing for me, to be honest with you. But I do really like the consistency of the powder and the finish it has on the skin. All right. So I did mention this earlier, the Rose 3 in 1 Primer Water Prep Set and Refresh. So they released um, this, like their setting spray a long time ago, maybe like two years ago now, and I hated the scent of that. Oh, it was terrible. If you've been with me for that long, you know how much I hated that. It smelled like cough syrup to me, and it just was terrible. I hated it. So when I saw that they were putting out actual scents, I was like, okay, I'm going to try these again because maybe I'll like the scents. And I really do like this. This has a lot of... Um, it's a definitely like a lighter scent than the primer. The primer, the cucumber primer is like thick and sweet and it's heavy. This is definitely like very light on the skin. It just is like a light rose scent. It reminds me a lot of like the Mario Badescu rose spray, that kind of scent, just very light. And again, it might be because it's an actual liquid and not like a cream product. Um, I like the packaging. I like that it has little roses on it and, you know, a pink cap. It's really cute. Um, it's smaller, which is nice too if you're using it to travel. I really love this to refresh my face throughout the day. So if I come home from work and I'm going somewhere that night and I want to just like touch up my makeup, I might just spritz my face with this first and kind of like give everything just a little 
refresh and wake my face up a little bit, you know, and then maybe go in with a little bit of powder and I'm good to go. So I really like this. To set the whole face, I don't think it necessarily makes your makeup last longer, but I do think it kind of helps take away that powderiness of, you know, if you use a lot of powders and stuff, and it kind of helps all the products melt together. So if that's the kind of spray that you like, I think you would really, really enjoy this. Okay, the last face thing I want to touch on is their Color Icon Bronzers. So these say new, but I think they're just new packaging. They're not necessarily new shades because this one is Ticket to Brazil, and I'm almost positive that they had that shade before. Um, so this is just like a light, warm bronzer. I have it on today, and it's got a little bit of shimmer, but not too much. It's more of like a sheen to it. It's not necessarily like straight up shimmer in it. Um, but I think it looks really nice and natural on the skin and just really warm and sun-kissed. So I absolutely love it and I love the new packaging. It is a little bit bigger than the limited edition ones they put out in their Fire and Ice collection. Those were more of just a plain square where this is more of like a little bit of a rectangle shape. I'm going to compare them for you guys. So this was the one in Bronze Dynasty from the Fire and Ice collection. And then this one is Ticket to Brazil. So you can see the packaging is definitely a little bit bigger. Um, are you actually getting more product? You are. So this is 0.38 and this is 0.19. So you're getting double the amount of product in here. Now just shade comparison real quick for you. This was Bronze Dynasty. Um, it was like a matte kind of satin finish. Definitely a more neutral kind of shade, I think. So that's what that one looked like. These swatches are so just like sloppy. but um, And then this is Ticket to Brazil, which it's much, much lighter, like way lighter and definitely um, a little bit more like yellow, not so red, whereas Braun Dynasty was definitely more red. So I kind of wish they would have come out with these like shades. I don't know. I just, I hate when brands do limited edition stuff, but Oh well, I'm happy like with the new packaging and I do really like this shade, especially if you're somewhere near my skin tone and especially this time of year when we're all a little bit more pale. That's kind of nice because you can just bronze up really naturally and you don't have to be like too scared you're going to look like an Oompa Loompa. Okay, so I have a couple eye things to chat with you guys about. They put out a couple new um, brow products and they have like a micro pencil. I didn't buy that. I don't really love those types of pencils for my brows. I just feel like they take too long. I really do love their Ultimate Brow Pencil, though, the one that's kind of on a slant that they've had out for a while. That's great. But they released their um, brow pomades. I'm not exactly sure what they are called. But I got the shade Medium Brown, which actually surprises me. I feel like I should have gotten a lighter shade. Um, so they just come in like a little pot like this, and then they come with a brush that can flip over very similar to like a benefit type of thing. Although I do not use this brush because if you guys can see, I'm sure it's hard to on camera. It is not angled at all. It is just like one of those, it almost looks like an eyeshadow like smudger brush. It does not look like a brow brush. I just, for me, this would not be precise enough. And I'm someone who I have a lot of natural brow hair. Um, and still, I just don't think that would be precise enough for me. But the consistency of the actual brow pomade is nice. It's very tiny, um, but you can, you know, you can get an angle brush in there, no problem. This shade in particular is a hair too dark, but if I use like a lighter colored brow gel, it's fine. Like lately I've been using this one from Milani because I'm testing this. This is the Stay Put Brow Shaping Gel, um, and this is the shade Taupe. So this is kind of a good match. Um, cause that's like, like a little bit lighter. This is a little bit too dark, so it works out well, but the consistency of this is nice. I would say it's a little bit drier than the Maybelline one that I reviewed. Um, you definitely got to work a little bit more to get the color out of the pot, but overall it does a great job. It spreads evenly throughout the brows and it's not too messy to use. And so I think, you know, for under $5, it's a great brow find. And then they also released their, um, Color Icon Multi Sticks. So these are kind of like, I really think of them as like eyeshadow sticks. And so I got two shades. I got Champagne Room, which is like a shimmer. And then I got, oh, the little bottom fell out of this one. Well, that ain't good. Because I don't know what the color is. Hmm. Well, I'll find it for you guys. But this is like a matte light brown. So let me um, swatch these for you. So that's the matte one. 
And I actually really like to use this to kind of, if I want to do an all matte look or if I just really want to do a simple eye look, I'll throw this all over and just kind of blend it out. And then I'll go in with this bronzer and just put it in the crease and I'm good to go. It works out well. Now, I will say this. This is the part that really bothers me. I'm going to take this lid off. It, that sucks. I feel like this happens so much more with shimmers than with mattes. And this kind of formula, and this always happens with Wet n Wild ones, and it drives me crazy because I really do like this shade. Um, it's actually a little bit more like cool toned bronzy for a champagne color, like for it being champagne room. I would have thought it would have been maybe a little bit lighter. It was actually a little bit deeper and cooler than I thought it would be, but I really liked it all over the lid. But it's like every time I use it, sometimes when I use it, the thing comes flying out with the cap. And then it's like it just moves around so much in the container that I can't get like an even application. So it just really drives me nuts. These do set pretty well. You can definitely blend them though. I mean, don't think you like absolutely can't because you can, but once they set, they set. I would say after like a good 10, 15 minutes, those suckers are locked and loaded and they're not going to go anywhere. So I know they put out some fun shades and stuff. I really liked the matte one, and I do, I really liked the shimmer one too. It just kind of sucks that it dried out and just, you know, flew out. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, well, it's wet and wild. You know, what do you expect if it's only $2? I'm like, well, I still want the product to work. Like, if you're going to put it on the market and it's $2 and you can afford to sell it for $2, then it, it better work. And if you can't, then don't sell it for that cheap. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care what a price tag is. I want the product to work. And when it just doesn't like that, and when it just completely falls apart, and I only used it like two or three times before that happened. That sucks, regardless of how much money it was. All right, last but not least, let's chat about some new lip colors. So they put out these color icon, or no, I'm sorry, the Perfect Pout lip colors. So when I saw these, they're a little bit skinnier of a tube than their original Mega Last lip colors. And I thought to myself, how are those going to be different? And I do feel like they are not drastically different, but I do think that they are different. The formula is definitely a little bit more creamy. I am wearing this one today that I keep gesturing, and this is 99% chance of wine, which I think is a cute name. Um, and so it's an obviously like a deep vampy kind of color. Um, gorgeous, like a purpley red, very like just a red wine shade. So it definitely is a little bit more creamy then the mega last it's not as dry i also have this shade in undercover lover which is a great red like see like one swipe that is full color but these are still matte lipsticks so they're not going to be the most hydrating things ever you know what i mean like they're going to have some tug to them and a little bit of dryness because they are matte but they are not as dry as the mega last lipsticks and i really like the slender tube this one right here is um bear your soul so it's a little bit of like a deeper warmer nude and then probably my favorite shade i got is this one in ring around the rosy which i think is a cute name again and it's like just a typical like rosy pink shade that i think is beautiful so again these are very full color as you guys saw like one swipe really full color um, I like the slim too because it's a really easy for application like today I did not use a lip liner and with this deep of a shade but because it's a slimmer tube and I could really turn the bullet and like get a precise application with the little slant it worked out really well for me so you know and again they're matte so they're not going to be as hydrating as like a cream lipstick or a glossy balm type of thing or a lip gloss but they are pretty comfortable for a matte lipstick. Like for what they are, they're comfortable. So, oh man, I was trying to avoid that. I just got lipstick on my sweater. Son of a... Oh, I'm losing my mind, you guys. Okay. So, overall, I like those lipsticks. I don't think they're like the most amazing lipstick formula ever. And like everyone needs to go... Whoa, I can't talk. I don't think they're the most amazing lipstick formula ever and that everyone needs to go out and buy them, but I do think that they're good. And if you see a shade or you're like, oh, I want to try that formula out, I don't think you'll be completely disappointed, you know, and if they are really way too dry for you, just put a lip balm underneath and you're good to go. But again, like I have some like 
moisture in this lip product to like move my lips around and stuff. It's not like clingy and dry and like chalky on the lips. Um, I really do like the Mega Last formula too. It's just over the years when new things come out, you, you know, there's better formulas that are made and developed. And so I think that one just kind of fell by the wayside for me. Like, oh, it was good, but now there's better, you know? Um, and I think that this is what that is. It was like, the Mega Last were good, but these are even better. You know what I mean? All right, you guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful and entertaining and all of that fun stuff. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Again, I will link that Maybelline video for you guys. I have a CoverGirl one planned as well as a Milani. And I kind of want to do um, like a new concealer showdown because I did get the new 16-hour camo concealer from e.l.f. Um, I have the new one from L'Oreal, that infallible one. Um, I have a CoverGirl one that's new. A Mil Milani's coming out with one that's new. So I feel like there's a lot of like, especially like full coverage concealers. So if you want to see like a showdown of them and me just do like rapid fire reviews of all of them and kind of compare them, let me know down below if you'd be interested in that. Because um, I think it might be kind of helpful with all of them coming out. It's like, okay, which one is actually good? You know what I mean? So anywho... I'm going to stop rambling and let you guys go. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye!